Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. I am here to do a requested video of a comparison between these two handbags here. They're both from the brand Saint Rev, and I have used both of these for quite a while now, so I feel like I can give a good review and comparison of the both of them. If you're not familiar with these two styles, I have the Saint Rev Aluna, which came out I think over a year ago now and I have this in the regular size. It also does come in a mini size. And then I also have a newer style from Senrev and this is called their Cadence bag. I did get a requested video to compare these two guys. So I am going to share my thoughts with you today. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Emily and I love handbags. I do handbags, unboxings, reviews, comparisons. I also love fashion, travel, and luxury. So if you like any or all of those things, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you'll be notified of my future videos. I have been a longtime Senra fan and for full disclosure, I am an ambassador. However, I am not paid to do this video. I am doing this video because you have asked for it and you find it helpful. So I will try my best to give my honest opinion and uh, answer your questions. In this video, I will compare the price, the size, the weight, how to wear it, maybe wear and tear, as well as what fits inside the bag. If I do miss any additional questions, leave it in the comments below and I'll try to get to it. I don't wanna miss anything, so I did write a lot of the information down in this notebook. So every so often you'll see me looking down for information here. The first thing I'll cover is the size of these bags as well as the weight. Now, they do look fairly comparable in size, but they are slightly different. So I will start off with the Aluna first since it is the first one to come into my collection. Um, this bag is width-wise 8.3 inches or 21 centimeters. The height is 7.9 inches or 20 centimeters, and the depth is roughly about 2.8 centimeters. And that does vary a little bit depending on like if you squish it down or if you like you know, expanded by putting more stuff in it, but that's, those are the rough estimates. It is 1.33 pounds or 0.6 kilograms. And it does have a crossbody strap, which can be removed if you kind of like tweak it by pulling off these, um, the studs and removing the, the, the strap. But if you wanted to just keep it on, it is adjustable. You can adjust the length of this uh, to wear crossbody on the shoulder or as a backpack. And it can range from 15.5 to 21.75 inches or 39 to 55 centimeters. Now there is a little top handle here. I don't know if you can see, but you can push it all the way down. So that is zero, but it can come up to one point three inches or about three centimeters. You do have a little bit of a handle here. Moving on to the Cadence bag. This one has a width of eight to nine inches or 20 to 23 centimeters. It has a height of 6.5 inches, which is 16.5 centimeters. And the depth um, is from 2.5 inches to about four inches. So it can expand as you can see, uh, depending on how you fill it. And it weighs 1.51 pounds or 0.7 kilograms. So just for reference, this one was 1.3 three three pounds versus 1.5 pounds so this one is slightly heavier and um, it does have a removable strap which i have removed and have replaced it with a fabric thicker strap but the one that comes with it is in the same color leather uh, as the bag so this one can be adjusted to wear multiple ways and i can show you that in a little bit but right now yeah i do i have been loving wearing it like this because i think it's more comfortable the removable strap that does come with the bag is 10 to 23 inches or 26.5 to 58.5 centimeters. This one can be purchased separately at the Senrev website, but it does not come with the bag. So that's why I, I didn't wanna like use this as the measurement because I thought you might wanna know what actually comes with the bag. So now that I've talked about the measurements, the weight, I wanted to go into the leather options as well as the color options. For the Aluna, you do get a lot more options because it has been around a little bit longer. Generally, the longer a bag hangs out, you do get more options. This one is in the mauve color, but I also have it in the sand color. 
It is in the pebbled leather that I have, and in the pebbled leather, you have about 14 colors. Now, they're not always available. Sometimes they go out of stock, but they do come in 14 colors. And this also comes in the Dulce leather, which is a more supple, more like grainy, um, soft, more, more luxurious feel. This is more durable feel. And the Dulce leather comes in three colors. So um, I'll try to insert that on the screen um, so that you can get an idea of what is available. The Cadence on the other hand, since it is a newer handbag, does mean that it is uh, more limited in its color. This is in the pebbled leather um, that I have and it's in the cream color, but it also comes in uh, five total colors. This one also does come in their newest material, which is the vegan Terra. So it's made from plant-based proteins. And that one also does come in five different colors. So uh, there are different color options that you could choose from. And both of them have two different leathers to choose from. Next up, I will go into the price because price does play a big factor in the bag you choose. Um, they're actually fairly comparable. So for the Aluna, it does range from 645, which is in the pebbled material, to 675, which is in the Dulce leather. The cadence ranges from 645 in the pebbled leather. So they both, since these both are pebbled leathers, they are both $645. Um, and it ranges up to 695 for their vegan Terra leather. So um, the higher price point is this one in their other material. But for the most part, you're looking at somewhere in the 600 and something dollar range for both of these. So I would say they're fairly comparable. So next up, I'm going to show you different ways that you can wear these bags. And I've already kind of alluded to that earlier in this video, but for the Aluna, you can see that you can wear it on the shoulder like so, but you can also wear it crossbody if you want it to. And because the straps are adjustable, you can make it longer and shorter. You can also wear it as a backpack by pulling these straps down. If you own the Maestra or if you own the Circa, you will be familiar with this mechanism, which you just pull down the straps to create two shorter straps. And so you can wear that now um, around your back and it becomes a backpack. I have shown in a different video that you can remove these straps altogether by popping up this stud and threading it through this loop, which is very difficult for some of these leathers, and then you can remove it all together. If you do that, you can now attach any other strap to these top hooks here, and then you can you know, wear it as a guitar strap, you can wear it as a chain strap, so you can do a lot. But this one is a lot harder to remove because I don't think the intention of this bag was to remove the strap at all. I have done it, but yeah, it does take a little bit of fidgeting. This bag, on the other hand, is a lot easier to remove. As you can see, I am wearing it without that leather that original came with the bag. I have the more fabric material, and so this one's not adjustable, but it is at a really good height for me. I am 5'1 and 155 centimeters, and I am able to wear this both across the body or on the shoulder. Now you can also attach other straps like a metal a chain or anything like that. There are these hooks on the inside where you attach the straps to. So yes, the possibilities are endless uh, depending on what straps you have in <laughs> your closet. The strap that actually comes with the bag is one long strap here and what you do is you can thread this through all of these loops around the outside and depending on how many times you thread it is how long or short the strap ends up being so you can see now that i thread it through and this one comes in here if you wanted a fairly long strap for example, um, you can you can push it into one of these earlier holes and then you have something that sits like this on your shoulder, but you can see that it is um, possible to wear both crossbody and on the shoulder. And you can make this shorter by continuing to loop this through 
further. So if you can see what I'm doing right here, so you just kind of thread it through. And so you can make it short enough where it becomes a just a shoulder bag. Now, I have done a previous video of my updated review of this bag, so that will go more in depth of how, like how you can actually make the adjustments on the strap. And I think some of you have asked how comfortable it is because there is this like step on this uh, strap, but I, I have shown in that other video that you can adjust so that the this like little bump here is not against any of your collarbones or shoulder blades or whatever. But yeah, I'm not gonna go into it in depth here because I have shown that before. I think this should be sufficient to, to show you that th this strap is very versatile and you can adjust it um, to almost any length that you would like. So now I'm going to go into the wear and tear of these two bags and then show you what can fit inside because I'll have to get up close and personal. So I thought I'd share this first. Um, both of these bags, like I said, are in the pebbled leather and because they're pebbled leather, they're kind of roughly the same um, wear and tear. I have had this for an, a whole year more than this one. So I can share with you like what the older one looks like. And then, so if I bring it closer, you can see that this one is... I mean, it's the older one, but you can kind of see that there is not really much wear and tear. So I'll show you the bottom. This one does not have any feet, but you can see it's still pretty clean. The corners are, you can't really see anything on the corners. And then the back of the bag, again, you can't really see anything too much. The top of the strap, which then has a lot more wear on the shoulder. Again, nothing too like jarring. Occasionally when I use it, I do notice some like maybe marks or stains from just brushing up against something. And I can easily take like a wet cloth, a damp cloth, and then just kind of wipe it off. So this one is very easy. They're pebbled leathers, one of their first leathers, and it's very durable. It's water resistant. It is stain resistant, scratch resistant. It's, I have never seen any wear on my Sunrev bags. So this one is not an exception. Um, and then comparing the, it with the newer bag. Now this one is white. Generally white bags do attract more stains, scratches, and do show up more. But I'll just show you right now that there isn't really anything too, too much um, in terms of what you can see. Is that, is that something? No, that's not something. So, right. And then here's the back. So the back, you can kind of see that it, it does not have any color transfers from my jeans, from my jackets, um, from pants that I'm wearing. But yeah, in general, you can see that it is fairly clean. Um, the top of the bag gets a lot of wear from me touching it. Again, not really anything too obvious that I can see. And again, same with the Aluna. If there are any smudges that I've seen when using it, I quickly just use a damp cloth and just wipe it off and it's, it's fixed. So I would say both of these are fairly durable in terms of you know, staining, scratching, um, color transfer, they're, they're pretty good. I would highly recommend it if you're nervous, especially if you want a lighter color bag and you're nervous about that. These leathers are very good options to choose for lighter color bags. So I have a few things laid out here that I wanted to share with you, whether it could fit into this bag. Some of the items are items that you have asked me specifically about. So let me just go into the bag construction so that you can see where I'm putting the items. There is a big pocket right here, which can easily fit a cell phone. There is a slip kind of hook right here, which you could put a pen. And then there's also a zip pocket back here where you can slip something thin, um, as well as a key hook right here, which I don't really use. Um, on the outside, there is a slip pocket back here as well. So that is the Aluna bag. One of the first things that I've been asked is whether it fits a wallet. This is my Emily wallet from Louis Vuitton. As you can see, if I put it you know, tall wise, you can close the bag with the, with just enough space for the wallet to stick up right there. Um, and it, it does have a higher clearance here because of this um, not touching the bottom of the opening of the bag. But you can see that it does take up much of the space in your bag. Uh, however, you can put that in there if you want. 
Other questions I have gotten are water bottles. So this one is a 16.9 fluid ounce water bottle and it does fit into the bag, as you can see. It doesn't cause too much bulging, but let me just show you with the bag closed and what you can fit. It is a tight squeeze as you can see, but you can see the bottle peeking up right there, again, touching the top. I think it does distort the bag a little bit because of the height. So another option would be to replace it with a shorter water bottle. The circumference of the bottle are the same between the two, but this one is um, a little bit shorter. So if I put it into here, you can see it fits. Um, same like kind of bulkiness, but now you can close the bag very easily without distorting it. And there's the side. <laughs> oh, and this one is eight fluid ounces. So it's about half the size of the other one. I'm just gonna leave it in here so that I can share what else you can put in with the water bottle. I have a Victorine wallet right here and you can see that I do have some coins, not very much uh, any, I don't have any cards or cash, but I don't think well, I guess it depends on how many cards you put in there, but uh, it's just for size reference. Um, so there you are, it fits in there no problem. You can also put it sideways, but uh, with a water bottle, probably tall ways is better. Someone asked about a micro pochette from Louis Vuitton. Um, I do have some stuff in here, like some papers, some ibuprofen and whatnot. So it's not completely full, but it's also not flat either. And that one can go right in back of the Victorine wallet. And if I wanted to, let's say, put in a couple of lippy, I have a Dior one here, I have a Louboutin right, one right here. You can put those inside this slip pocket like that. So yeah, that is a good amount of stuff and it can still close. And let's see if I could put some sunglasses in here. So this one is a Dior case. It will not fit. You could probably fit it tall ways, but given what I have in here right now, it won't. If I took this out though, so I have my sunglasses in here and then I have a little cloth or if you have a little baggie, you can certainly plop it on top and it will not, um, it, w it won't fall down to the bottom. So you can carry it without being too worried. Uh, but yeah, if you're not into that, you might wanna invest in one of these cases. This is from Senrev uh, also. It has their signature blue microfiber lining. It also has a little zip pocket back here. But what you can do is put your sunglasses in here, snap it up, and then there is this hook. So this hook can be hooked like anywhere. Um, so let's say on this bag, I where would I put it? Mm -hmm. um, actually, you know what? So I, like I said, I don't really use this little key fob, but what I could do is um, put it there. And then you can see that if I were, uh, so let's close the bag first. There we go. And then um, you can see that it just kind of hangs outside like this. So it probably, I don't know. It might be okay, but it swings a little bit. So actually, let me see where else I can hook it. Mm, it doesn't do well with hooking onto leathers, especially like thick pieces like this. So I'm actually not sure where I would hook this um, besides the back, which um, may not work really well if you know, you're know you wearing it crossbody, but it does hang right there. So there are other options, but I just wanted to share this case with you in case um, you are interested. So I'm gonna take out some of these items to share with you what else can fit in here. So I'm gonna put all these things and then one of the things I have been asked is, is whether it fits a mini iPad. And I will show you now, it does stick up a little bit, but if you, can you close it? So you can barely close it. I would say it's, I don't know if I would carry this for long periods of time, but if you just want it to be hands-free for a moment, you can carry it. And if you angle it, you certainly can. Uh, but it is just a slightly too tall, I think, to, for this to close. Um, so yeah, if you don't close it, you can hold it, but I don't like it when my bags don't close. So I would say probably not, uh, but you can if you uh, leave this slightly opened. 
And what else can I share with you? I have a mini pochette. So earlier I showed you the micro pochette and here I have the mini pochette. Um, I have been asked wh uh, why do I show it empty? It's because I mainly show it for the height and the width, but yeah, if I, depending on how much you fill something with, so there's a compact, um, yes, the, the depth would definitely change, but it's hard for me to like determine how. So let me, let me just try to fit as much as I think would be good in here. Let's see. They, is this bulky enough? Yeah, it's kind of got some bulk in it now, so you can see. And so if I put this in here, it does fit long ways down. Um, so right there. And then even then you can put in like a wallet um, in the back of it. So like that. And then um, you can put sunglasses. You can actually put this case in here. I, it just doesn't fit this rigid one, but uh, it does fit the lunettes one. So let me show you now. Um, so it does close and it's not terribly bulky. It does not have like, it does not distort its shape. I do want to show you that if you have a similar phone to mine, which is a Pixel 5, um, it can slip in this back pocket, but it's very snug and it does pop out, but it still has space on either side. So you could fit a wider phone if you want, but if you didn't want to put it in the back, the slip pocket that I showed earlier in this front section, you can put your phone in there. So um, there we go. So my phone is, in here and if you have a taller phone it'll still fit because you can see it doesn't take up the entire height uh, so again let me close it so that you can see what it looks like closed um there we go it's pretty full now though so i i don't know if i would fit anything more than this so i hope that uh, gives you a good idea of what fits into the aluna i'm sure there are many more options so yeah, if I if I missed anything um, that you really want to see, I can answer in the comments below. So the Cadence is a little different in that it has a pop open closure and no zippers. Although I never really zip my Aluna bag anyway, but uh, first things I wanted to share is whether it fits a wallet. So right now you can see that this 20 centimeter wallet is really hard to fit in here because um, it is <laughs> basically the length of this. I have noticed though, um, so let me take off the straps. So the straps do take up space in the inside of the bag, but if I did, let's say you had the um, original strap, which goes on the outside of the bag. Now you can fit in your wallet because there's not extra space taken up but it does take up most of your bag because it does have to sit in the middle of the middle compartment as you can see so it can fit and it cannot fit tall ways because it's too tall for the bag so i would say if you have a long wallet that you definitely want to bring put it into the luna instead of the cadence the other item i shared earlier is the ipad mini and the ipad mini won't fit in here because it's just a little bit too long but height wise it also won't fit so not very good for either bags then i will go into the water bottles i have the 16.9 fluid ounce and you can see that it's too tall but if i put it sideways it can fit although that is everything in the middle compartment but you can close it and it does not distort the bag um, so let me show you with the smaller the eight fluid ounce one can fit in here and it doesn't stick up. So other things include the Victorine wallet from Louis Vuitton. And so that does fit in there. The micro pochette that somebody asked me about, again, it's filled loosely with um, paper and you know other knickknacks and that does fit in there right next to the wallet. And then what about a sunglass case? Now you can technically um, let's see, how do I, so you can see that if I did that, can you close it? You can, but it's like, if this is actually distorting the back, so I probably wouldn't do that. But if you had the lunette case, which is a little bit more soft and takes up less space, you can fit it. And in this case, it won't distort the bag and it closes fine. Um, the lunettes case in, uh, for this bag does hook very easily to the outside because there are so many option hooks. 
or so many places to hook. So here we go. You can hook it there. As you can see, you can hook it on the side right there. And if you have, um, you know, a, a strap that comes out from here, this will be your case and then it won't get squished. Um, but that is an option if you wanted to buy this case separately. All right, so going back inside the bag, you do uh, see that there are other compartments here. So I can show you that the micro pochette can fit into the front slot right there. There are these middle slots, which are great for cards, but yeah, the micro pochette does fit in this front one. So that's what it looks like. And so you can still close it. And it is very bulky now, as you can see right there. Um, but you can wear it and it doesn't distort it uh, unevenly. And same concept is, let's see, test the back. The back is a little bit more snug because as you can see, the front has this extra gusset right here, but the back doesn't. So I don't think the back can really fit the micro pochette, whereas the front can, because it does, it does allow you to pop it open a little bit. Um, but if you did that, then you can technically put this mini pochette, which now is filled with like compacts and lippies. Um, so let's see if it'll fit. It's a tight squeeze. Can I fit it tall ways? You can't fit it tall ways, so you have to fit it lengthwise. It may not fit with the water bottle because it's too wide. So I'm gonna take out the water bottle. And then you can see that the, the mini pochette does fit into the center of this bag with the wallet. And then you can still put in your sunglasses right here, like that. And then if you have other cards or anything, you can slip it back here. So let's close it and you can see it is bulky. Um, it is quite like expanded, but it does fit. And your phone, I suppose your phone can fit back here. See, mine slipped back there and there is space on either side so that you could fit a bigger phone. Um, so there we go. However, I just wanted to point out that it's a very annoying spot because you have to open the bag. I do go into my phone more often than that. So what I do is actually put it into the back slip pocket right there. And you can see it does stick up from the from the top. So if you have a bigger phone, it would definitely stick up more, but there is enough space on either side for a wider phone. I have been able to put it this way. So it is more secure this way. Uh, if you have a bigger phone, it may not fit this way, but I have noticed it harder to take out. So for me, even though my phone can fit that way, I ended up just slotting it uh, tall ways. All right, I hope you've enjoyed the comparison between these two Sunref bags. I do also have a $50 off link, which I will link below, but it is sunrev.com slash Angelin if you are interested. I am very glad I have both of these in my collection because they are quite different in terms of their style, their shape, um, even though they can hold very similar items and are very similar in weight. Um, I I don't know if I could pick one of these because I think I generally like this style more, but this one has captured my heart. Um, the design is so unique, so fresh that I think it does kind of give it more of a dressed up look, whereas this one is more uh, your casual, more carefree kind of look. So I definitely do like having both in my collection and I never feel like I would uh, pick one over the other. It's more like which one goes better with the occasion or the outfit that day. So I would love to know your thoughts on either of these bags. Do you have either one? Are you planning to get either one? I know a lot of you are debating between the two, so I'm hoping that this video shed some light on one or the other, or maybe you need both in your life like I do. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!